You are now watching Zach Lesage PTCG. Let's get it. Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be covering over an important topic that's coming up immediately, the Players Cup 4. So I was actually able to win the Players Cup 2. Yeah, I actually got one of these trophies. Uh, humble brag here, but the whole point is I can turn you from where you are as a player, um, entering in maybe with some questions, into possibly the eventual champion if you follow some of the success. So I'll put that down over there. Um, the idea of this video is to really show you some of my best practices that I use to maximize on my tournament rep, to make sure that I'm in a good mental health, to make sure that you're playing the best decks. And I recommend that you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to follow tips all throughout the Players' Cup 4. Um, as, like I said, as a Players' Cup champion myself, I do want to be able to help give back to the community and you might be the next Players' Cup champion. Um, it is quite possible um, in this format. So we'll dive into this video. So expect the best decks, expect some of my top tricks and um, everything else. Um, if you're missing any cards for the Players' Cup 4, go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5 to save 5% on your order. Um, if there's any decks in this video that I've covered that I think are the best decks, they are going to be in the pinned comment below. Um, just so that you can copy and paste them in the PTC Geo. They're also in this video. I know I get a lot of DMs and people are like, oh, I can't find the comment or anything like that. That's cool. Um, you can literally take the list and input it yourself. So just to make sure that everyone has access to those lists. With that being said, um, let's, let's kind of jump into it and see exactly what's going on. So every passing week, we see new information available to us. Uh, we recently just are wrapping up with the Players Cup 3, the Global Finals, and we also have other events like the GG Tour Regional Style events or Limitless Majors by Town. These are really one of those things where those top decks are really going to dictate our meta for days, weeks, in some cases months. Um, other decks will dictate for a year, like ADPization has been around forever and it kind of curves the metagame in a way where those decks might be popular so if a deck's having a lot of success um like let's just take for the personal experience that i've had um from the players cup to i won with pikachu and zekrom gx pikachu and zekrom gx spiked um in terms of popularity and play after it won that event and it's one of those things where that brings on more um it, it just brings on more Pika ROMs to really deal with. It brings on more counters. So you might want to play something a little bit more neutral in your Players' Cup 3 um, pod or your Players' Cup 4 pods or anything like that. So you want to just be careful with the way that you're playing things out. So I would just like make sure that like you're not necessarily running into a deck that just won. You have a particularly poor matchup. So let's say if um, Pikaram just won, you wouldn't want to be running a Lapras VMAX deck, for example. Not to say that you want to play Lapras VMAX in the first place, but it's one of those things. Don't get yourself um, losing to the top deck because a lot of the community will like to play those decks that just won. You could always check out the Play Limitless website or the Play Pokemon website to see what top decks are recently performing at official events or community ran events. Um, or you could follow your favorites. Uh, Pokemon YouTuber content creator um, to really see exactly what's going on. Hopefully by you watching this video that I'm one of your top picks for information. So I do run my meta game analysis breakdowns every single Monday. Um, so you can see exactly what's going on, but really just tracking to see exactly what's going on. In the meta is going to be a top trick. There's a certain art of selecting a deck for the player's cup for, and that's not to say that every single deck is built equally. Um, but there are some ways that you could maximize your advantages when it comes to a deck. Um, and I think the best way to describe this is to look at, um, let's say a Victini deck. So we're gonna look at a standard, just straight up Victini deck here, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm sure you'll get the point by the end of it. Looking at this deck, you see a fairly average Victini deck. It's gonna be using max victory over and over again with boss's orders. And I mean, if you watch Victini decks, this, this is basically as standard as you can get. Maybe someone would take the Marnies out for a professor's research, but it's a Pokegear version of Victini VMAX, and this is what we have going on. Nothing really out of the normal. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this deck is bad. This deck is very standard, it's very vanilla, it's very bland, but it's tried and true. Is that the best strategy for the Players' Cup 4? So looking over that Victini list that we had, um, it was pretty bland. Not a lot of spice going on in this deck. So one thing you want to note is that unlike the majority of our community-ran events, like Chill on Wednesdays or the Limitless events, 
Um, you cannot see your opponent's deck when you're playing in these event pods trying to earn tournament reps. So if you add in weird techs like Wondrous Lab, Tool Jammer, Absol from team up to your opponent to your deck, your opponent will not know, so they might not properly react. So if they've only seen Victini decks, like the one that we just saw, the standardized bland list or an ADPization list, they understand that 50 plus cards are going to remain the same. Or some in some cases, there's basically a standardized 60. And that can especially happen after a player wins a major event, like the Players Cup 3. Um, and I'm sure we're gonna see some lists come out of that that people are gonna be playing over and over again because they're gonna be plugged and played into the Battle Styles format. What does that mean for our deck? Well, if you add weird techs, you might give yourself an advantage because your opponent might not know how to properly deal with your deck as much as they usually do. Um, so let's see exactly what that looks like for our Victini deck that we recently just, we, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit of spice. So I'm gonna start off by saying, don't ruin the competitive integrity of your deck by adding in some techs, but you can see that they might not have seen a Crushing Hammers Victini list before, or that they're not expecting a Wondrous Labyrinth or they're not expecting a tool jammer. These can lead you in situations where they've properly prepared their game plan around something like a stock Victini list that we saw a couple, like the, the one that I already showed you, but a tool jammer could be very helpful against a lot of decks that are heavy on the tools. Maybe things like uh, a Spiritomb deck that's running all those Cape of Toughness, that's making it do a lot of damage. Um, tools Jammer, they might not expect that, and they might overplay and lose because of it. Some, same thing with Wondrous Lab, they might pitch their stadiums early on, and if you play a late game Wondrous Lab, you might have that Eureka moment. Crushing Hammer, again, uncommon in Victini VMAX, but it is something that you can use to effectively have a strong chance. So I'm not saying ruin your decks, I'm not saying play the most techiest builds ever. I'm just saying adding a few techs here and there can really boost your chances because a lot of players are only expecting the most standardized lists like ADP Zation, Eternatus with the Phoebe and the Pal Pad. All of these lists that are continuously seeing the same amount of success on the Play Limitless website. Most Rapid Strike Urshfu lists are gonna be based off of Rahul's winning lists or lists that did well at the Players' Cup 3. Um, it's it's really going to be like that uh, for the foreseeable future. So if you do decide to tech out your decks, it can be a valid strategy. And I do want to let you know that. Um, and again, if, it, if the techs aren't working for you, make sure that everything you bring in is tested. But this list has also been working very well for me in my testing. I don't necessarily want to recommend this deck right now, but it is something that I do plan on executing myself just in terms of techs um, and the text can range from a lot of things so just keep it a little bit interesting if you have the possibility to do so and while we're on the same subject of making your decks a little bit weird you also want to understand what a stock list looks like yourself so what is a stock list well when you see an adp zation deck that basically is the same deck over and over again it, it, it's going to be a stock list, something that's commonly known. So if you do a little bit of research, like my metagame analysis every single Monday, um, or let's say you want to watch the channel Fireball one, or you've been watching the Limitless events, doing research is almost as important as playtesting, because most Rapid Strike Urshfu VMAX lists are about 55 of the same cards, and there's about five tech spots between Reset Stamp or a Karate Belt, uh, maybe a Mewtwo, maybe a Cheryl, maybe a Malovana, like these are all common tech cards. And then there's a 55 common list, um, at least upon the top playing list. So if you understand what those decks look like, you can properly plan your game out to understand what, what might be happening next in a particular game. Um, and it's, it sounds easier said than done, but just under, like maybe even having lists pulled up might help you out as you play. There's nothing that says that you can't have what a common ADP list looks like or the one that just won the last event. So maybe take my try hard Monday winning list, pull that up on your phone while you're playing the game out. So you could be like, oh, you want to know what? This is going to be kind of like my guide. It, it's, a, it's a rough roadmap. Your opponent might pull out this tech, but at least if they're playing that tech, you know that they might not play another tech because every deck is 60 cards. So make sure that you can, you're able to form those game plans. Certainly gonna help you see some success. Another thing that I wanna go over is making sure that you take the most out of your games. Have you ever recorded the results of your games? 
do you do you know how to create a spreadsheet um and these are like really questions you want to ask yourself and be like yo why is zach talking about that i thought uh i thought i failed math a few years ago whatever stuff like that um pokemon's not necessarily but the game at hand i find most of my play testing um or most of my findings come before and after a game. And basically the middle while I'm actually playing is just the motion. I'm going through the motion of all my findings and I'm trying to continuously find if I am looking. So I'm gonna share this next thing. Uh, my next slide is gonna go over some of my tips and tricks. Then we're gonna go over what a spreadsheet should look like for the Players Cup. And I mean, you could go with, go in as little or advanced as possible, whatever seems to work by for you. But um, let's check out this next slide. Look at the slide, give it a second to soak in. So maybe you're playing at a particular time, maybe that time has a strong player base of players. So maybe it's when some of the more popular um, Pokemon streamers play, maybe it's a time where you're playing against players who play wackier decks. Um, maybe you're playing at a time that is actually really working for you. Um, so I mean, I believe that there's a certain metagame that changes throughout the day um, when you're playing. So maybe there's a time um, that's more noticeable than not but at the end of the day maybe i'm wrong but at least i'm tracking it um and it's one of those things do i do i lose more often when i'm waking up maybe i need my morning coffee or maybe i just need a glass of water to really start my day maybe i'm not properly thinking um if you track your data to find a winning patterns you could boost your amount of rep that you get or at least put yourself in a position um to see if you can kind of push a little bit more so maybe you notice that you're winning um, as soon as you wake up you're ready to start the day you're in a great mood you get out a couple games before work make sure that you do that and you have enough time to play let's look at what my spreadsheet looks like for an event like this so if we're looking at the deck that I the, the decks that I've been playing or the spreadsheet in general you could see I feature the key that I'm playing on because I think it's a good idea to track where you are with your keys um, I try to play Pokemon or at least I try to play the Players' Cup as if I'm broke going to the grocery store. If I have 50 bucks to spend, I'm not spending 51. You can't plan on earning more rep than what you can get with your 50 keys, so make sure that you're on track with the amount of keys that you have. Um, I also write the deck that I played because I think that's important. I think it's worthwhile to write the date, um, and it's also good just for timekeeping if anything were to ever happen, or let's say if you're missing the result of one of your keys, if the system didn't collect it properly, at least you have some kind of backup to be like, okay, this is exactly what happened. Um, I do like noting the time. I like highlighting when I win. I like the amount of wins and losses so I can actually track to see what my success record is with any particular deck and overall. Um, and then writing the decks that I play against so you could actually determine what a general metagame looks like between times. And also when it shows you the amount of times and dates, it shows how many tournaments you play in a row. So, I mean, if you look at my first run, I made top four, first, second, first. Um, and then I, I played one more top four, another first, and then I made top eight. That's when I gave up. So I ended up playing seven tournaments, which might be a lot. So play as much as you're able to kind of handle. I don't want to continuously play. You could see that I started at nine and ended at 1.45 a.m. Maybe I took a break here or there, or maybe I went and got a snack. Maybe I got a cold drink out of the fridge. You want to make sure that you're taking ample breaks in between. You want to make sure you're giving yourself the mental headspace. Take your dog for a walk. Call call your significant other. Uh, shoot your dad a text. You know what I'm saying? Like, give yourself that space to have a real life. Because if you're just non-stop grinding these events, that's when you're really going to be making mistakes. And you can see, like, there's events where, like, I got into a rough period of time. I went into a rough... The metagame might change. So it, it's one of those things. Tracking it is so successful. Um, or at least it's been so successful for myself. I have qualified for all the Players' Cups so far. And I do continue to plan um, creating this spreadsheet. Now, I will likely have this on my Discord somewhere. I'm not sure if I'm going to be making it premium content or anything like that. But let me know what you want to do within the in the comments below. Love to know if you'd want access to my spreadsheets or what you think is fair for me to offer. It's something that I've actually touched on a little bit um, in the last um, kind of spreadsheet talk. And it's important to take breaks, making sure that you're good in a mental mindset. Um, a lot of people don't like talking about mental health and that's might be because they're in, uncomfortable with that discussion. I'm, I'm someone who suffers from mental issues um, lately. It's one of those things where it's just like, um, I know when I need to take a break. 
um, and that's some things that have got me in hot water before sometimes I say the wrong thing um, and it's because my mind is unclear the same way is when you're playing Pokemon you might not be playing Pokemon with a clear mind you might not be coping with the best things so whether whether you are in a fight with your girlfriend or maybe maybe your parents said something um, a little bit vile to you or your friend said something in a group chat and you're like a little bit questionable or maybe there's some drama going on Twitter. I mean, there's always drama going on in Pokemon Twitter. Maybe that's clouding your mind and it's taking you away from a zero mindset. So let's look at this next slide and see exactly what some of the best practices are um, that I've kind of noticed that are um, going to help you get through the Players Cup 4. So I think regardless of if you're winning or losing, give yourself um, time to clear your mind. You can use this to reflect on the games played, get all that Pokemon information out of your system, go for a long walk, get some exercise, eat something nutritious, and make sure that you do not strain yourself as a player. And it doesn't this this slide doesn't necessarily mention mental health, but or getting into a zero mindset. But one of the things that I believe as a player is if you just think about the game at hand about Pokemon, you're not going to be making mistakes. You're able to hyper focus in on a particular game and then play it to your absolute fullest. Um, and that could be one of those things where like, maybe maybe you shouldn't be on a VC with your friend who's in a bad mood or something while you play, or maybe you shouldn't be streaming in front of a bunch of people trying to be an entertainer. And that's not to say don't create content or don't hang out with your friends or don't do anything. But I mean, put yourself in a safe place. Make sure that you have an appropriate amount of time to play out your games. I know that even for me, um, one thing that's really sad for the PC too, I, I literally was cooking dinner. I was like, oh, you wanna know what? I'm gonna boil this pasta water. Let's start up a pod. And by the time I came back, I realized that I won I run the first round, I came back and I automatically lost because I lost track of time and I just forgot that I was playing in a Players Cup event. And I actually ended up winning the Players Cup 2 altogether. But it's one of those things where that could have been the rep that allowed me not to qualify. Um, and if I did that continuously or if I didn't take note of that behavior, you don't know. So make sure that you have a stable Wi-Fi connection. Make sure that if you're thirsty, ha that you have your drink. Get yourself set up for success. Um, and taking breaks is certainly one of those things that can be successful for a lot of players. So if you got here so far, um, and if you've been listening to everything, hopefully that puts you in a great position. Um, we got one more thing, kind of like the, the Apple events and stuff like that. Just one more thing. Um, of course, we're going to be going over some of my best decks. I was contemplating if it's something that I wanted to add for this particular video, and that's because I do run my metagame analysis every single Monday. So if you haven't noticed already, I cover the top 10 best decks, my personal lists, or some of the top performing decks in the game, and I scour through the internet to make sure that I provide the best 10 decks every single Monday in order based off my own personal rankings and tournament results. Sure, this might sound like a shameless, shameless plug, but I also decided to add in four decks that I think stand above the rest, regardless of however they're placed. I think these are great choices for the upcoming metagame that I expect for the Players' Cup 4. Now, don't necessarily always take my word on this. The metagame can, can greatly change within a month, but these decks so far have been really proving themselves in our Battle Styles metagame. So if you are looking for a list or if you're looking to kind of get Monday starting off hot, these are really great early picks for the Players' Cup 4. Obviously, stay up to date on my channel to see exactly what's popping. So let's let's see exactly what's up. So why might you want to play a bet one of the best decks instead of playing your own homebrew deck? Well, some decks are just built better than others. So like I said, you can watch my metagame analysis every Monday to determine the top decks. But these are some of my top decks for this particular week, regardless of my metagame analysis. Um, and I think that these decks can hold their own in an event like the Players Cup four so something that i do want to note like let's say i rank eternatus as number one for the top meta that might be based off of event results and those particular um factors that led into it doing well in events and that's not to say eternatus is going to be number one or anything like that i'm honestly not sure gotta film this afterwards i'm a busy zach but i do want to just be like 
sometimes E-Turn might not be a great choice for the PC4, and that may be because it has a poor matchup spread, or sometimes decks do well because they are good for a particular event because that's how the metagame's shaping up. The decks that I'm featuring are a little bit more well-rounded, decks that give you opportunities to kind of tech towards the metagame, or you can change your strategy up depending on the matchup, have a great matchup spread. So that's really what I wanted to feature here, but um, I mean, it's one of those things where if you are looking for something a little bit more up to date to the moment, uh, check into my channel every single Monday to check out the best decks. I mean, and uh, that, that's all I could really say here. So starting off with one of my top decks, I think that ADP Zacian is a great choice. Why do I think ADP Zacian is a great choice? Because it's well-rounded and boss boss game is a thing. So just after you get Altered Creation set up with a Metal and a Water Energy, you could either use Ultimate Ray or Power Up with Metal Saucer to continuously dominate your opponent throughout the rest of the game. I think this deck is vicious, and while it's easy to play, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a bad choice for the Player's Cup 4. It has a great matchup against most things in the metagame, and my favorite part about this deck is that you're actually just not going to scoop to your opponents if they play something weird. Sure, you might want to add an Aegislash in because people will go out there with Decidueye and Altaria decks, but if you do end up adding that in, you're not necessarily going to be like, oh, I played against this, this is a terrible matchup. Why is this a terrible matchup? Like, more often than not, you're going to be able to play games, and the more times you set up and you're just playing games, the more times you're going to be seeing success. Next up, you got Luke Metal. I think Luke Metal is a great choice, especially with Rapid Strike Urshifu being on an absolute tear lately. I think Luke Metal um, has a pretty decent matchup spread as long as you avoid fire, but it does have a chance to beat fire in some of these qualifiers, which makes an amazing deck choice for the Players' Cup 4. Um, you're either focusing on the attacking Zacian V, the defense of Zamazenta V, or Luke Metal if your opponent gets a little bit rowdy with those energies. I mean, it's it's not anything crazy. There's only three Pokemon available in this deck, but those three Pokemon work together well to create a compelling concept, and players like Joshua Sutherland have been non-stop playing this deck to the utmost success. Another choice that I think is great, and it's something that I've undervalued in this particular format, is Pikachu and Zacharam GX. So after I won the Players' Cup 2 with this deck, a lot of players played it, a lot of players countered it, Battle Styles came out, thought that Rapid Strike would really um, kind of take this deck's throne, but one thing that we have to remember is that this deck's half a Mewtwo and Mew GX deck. Now, with Rapid Strike Urshu playing Mimikyu, that's where you add Stealthy Hood in to block Mimikyu from blocking Mewtwo Mew GX, so we are now again a Psychic-type deck. This deck has a bag of tricks available to it, and it's one of the only few decks that can kind of skedaddle out of any poor situation. And that's not to say you're going to win every single game with this deck, but it is a very highly rewarding deck for a skilled player, and I recommend playing around with it. Um, between powering up energies with Bolt and V, overcoming your opponent's obstacles with Pikachu and Zekrom GX, and using the versatility of Mewtwo Mew GX on top of the whole bag of Team Yelgren's Crushing Hammer, Air Balloon, Stealthy Hood, Reset Stamp, all these cool things that you could do with the deck non-stop over and over again. I think it's one of those things where this deck clearly, um, it, it's advantageous towards the end of our Tag Team to Sword and Shield metagame. Um, this deck's kind of gained the most throughout all of it, and it seems quite strong. And last up on this list, we do have Rapid Strike Urshifu. Um, Rapid Strike Urshifu being one of the absolute best decks that we have available in our format. Um, really the front runner coming from battle styles. This deck has seen success at all levels of competition, major events, official events, community ran events. Um, it's because it's very versatile. I was a naysayer to this deck as well uh, because I didn't think that the attacks were doing enough damage. I compared it in my mind to like Orpedal VMAX, which is also seeing a little bit more success lately, but um, doing 120, 120 and really picking and choosing where you place your damage counters and being able to control the landscape of the game through secured attacks and multi-damage attacks and stuff like that it can be really strong. Um, this deck has a lot of answers to our current metagame. As you can see, Gyratina can get through Weakness Guard energy, Mew can block opposing Rapid Strike Urshifu, Mimikyu is great to block um, Mewtwo and Mew GX. This deck has a lot of answers crammed into a 60 card deck, which gives you the opportunity to outplay your opponent, making this one of the best choices in the event. Now, if you play this deck, for example, in the event, and you are running into a lot of Psychic type decks, maybe it's a good chance to switch to one of the other decks, or maybe switch to one of those Psychic type decks yourself. And that's something to really determine when you're playing through your run, but right now I think Rabbit Strike Urshifu VMAX still continuously dominating in tournaments, absolutely amazing.
And that's what we got going on with the video today, peeps. Hopefully this explained between all the things between knowing what the metagame is, knowing what a stock list is, taking breaks, Bex practices, um, all that good stuff, maybe teching your deck out a little bit more. Hopefully that gets you one of those trophies in the back right there, um, or at least close enough where you can at least qualify. I mean, those sleeves that you get are absolutely ballin'. Um, I'm super excited to participate in this event and try to get another one of those trophies for myself or add another accomplishment to my player resume. So no matter what you're trying to do, make sure that you are following these best tips. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm a chill dude. Um, I know like to some people, the tattoos might be a little intimidating, but it's one of those things where I just try to be a generally nice dude, help with the community whenever possible. And I know there's a lot of peeps that say otherwise about me. Honestly, if you get to know me, that's who I am as a person, always there for our community whenever possible. So I hope uh, I hope to hear out from some of you peeps, maybe in the comments, maybe you wanna shoot me a DM. I also wanna let you know that I am offering coaching for the Players' Cup 4, um, and that information is confidential between us. So if you have a cool deck that you wanna talk about, I'm not necessarily gonna turn it into a video. Um, or anything like that. It's one of those things where any conversation I have with a client is strictly between me and a client to make sure that I can help you grow out there. So if you are interested, feel free to DM me um, on Twitter at Zach Lesage PTCG or at Discord at Zach Lesage PTCG hashtag 3773. Um, all that information is in the description below. And if you got this far in the, this video and you like the content, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to give this video a subscribe there and consider becoming a YouTube channel member if you want to help support me a little bit more as I grow as a content creator. That being said, I got a bunch of editing. I think this video has upwards of 20 parts in it and that's going to require a lot of uh, fun stuff on iMovie. So that being said, I'm going to get started with that. <laughs> Hopefully you all enjoyed this video and best of luck at the Players Cup 4. Peace out. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's become a channel member so far. Some peeps wa love watching my videos, and I totally appreciate that, but some peeps have gone more than out of their way beyond just watching my videos and have supported me financially. So shout out to everyone who's been featured on this channel, who's going through this list of names. We actually have so many channel members that I can't fit them in a single slide, so I figured this might be the best way to get everyone appreciated and kind of showcase all of the top supporters of the Zach Lesage PGCG YouTube channel. Seriously, it means the bottom, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I, it's honestly, I'm almost at a loss for words but I, I'm so happy that you are all appreciating and loving the content and that it's hitting home and I mean I'm all, I'm up all in my feels so I hope that you uh, <laughs> understand and thank you so much everyone if you want to become a channel member totally consider it um, I'll make it worth your while um, and I, I totally mean that I'll do everything I possibly can for my channel members to make it sure that it's worth their while so thank you so much everyone and it, it, it's just amazing thank you for everyone who's wondering on how to become a channel member, I first and foremost appreciate your consideration. You can click on any one of my videos on desktop, and then you can click join. Join will give you all the opportunities about what we have going on. You can support my content, you can choose the deck list hookup, where you get access to my deck list, and we have a group coaching package as well. Um, there's a lot of other things like custom emotes, early access to videos that I try to offer, so you would just click join and you'd be good and you'd be featured at the end of these videos. Thanks so much everyone. So much for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to help support me as a content creator. Thanks again and have yourself a great one.